In today's video, we're going to give you four ways to lose weight, including the most efficient way. Coming up. Hi everyone, this is Dr. Ernesto from Attaboy Cowboy, and today I'm recording in Huntington Beach, California. And I wanted to go over three of the most common ways that people try to lose weight and the most efficient way to lose weight, the easiest. So let me go over the first one. First one is calorie deficit. That's what most people do. They say, okay, I eat 3,000 calories a day. I'm gonna cut the amount of calories I'm eating a day. I'm gonna cut it down to 2,000 and I'm gonna lose weight. The only issue is that we have a survival mechanism that was developed over our evolution that whenever we start consuming less calories, our body will actually slow itself down. It'll slow down its metabolism so that we can survive. Because when we were hunter-gatherers and cavemen, people didn't eat every day. We were what they called opportunistic feeders. We fed, we ate whenever we found something. Otherwise, we were not eating. So as a survival mechanism, our body learned to accumulate and save fat. So fat is actually a survival mechanism. So if I normally eat 3,000 calories a day, I start eating 2,000, my body is gonna slow down its metabolism to match the consumption of the calories I'm eating. So I'm actually gonna start burning 2,000 calories. You'll start feeling more tired. It's just not gonna work. In fact, most people that do that, they tend to binge more. So people that go into calorie-restricted diet end up gaining more weight. They calorie-restrict, they calorie-restrict, you know, they'll just eat carrots and apples or whatever. And then they'll start looking at that pizza. <laughs> those donuts, they'll say, screw it, man. I've been doing this for two weeks, I'm gonna eat it. They'll gorge, they'll blow up again. You'll actually gain more weight. So calorie restriction is not a good way to go. It also causes a lot of anxiety and stress and it causes psychological damage. It makes you crave food more. It makes you have more cravings for things that you shouldn't be eating, okay? Strategy number two, exercise exercise is excellent it has a lot of health benefits it makes you feel great you look good so, i mean it's it's great but it's really not gonna not the way to lose weight studies show that people that go on calorie restricted diet lose about one to three percent of their body weight not very much people that exercise lose somewhere like around three percent again it's not very much it's not going to make much difference and just to get, put that into perspective let's give you a, an example let's say you eat a donut the calories that you could consume and eating one donut, you'd have to run on this beach for about three hours to burn those up. So, you know, most people don't eat just one donut, usually, you know, more than one. <clears throat> Even if you eat one donut, who runs for three hours? Not very many people. So that's not really going to work. The other thing is that most people have sedentary jobs. That's typical these days. People work in offices. They work in places where they're not outdoors a lot. So they don't get a lot of sunlight like I'm getting right now. They also don't get a lot of movement. So oftentimes, people will go to the gym for an hour a day and then they'll go and sit for eight hours in the office that's not going to cut it you're not going to lose weight like that so the way to do it is step number three you want to in increase your neat n-e-a-t that stands for non-exercise activity <laughs> thermogenesis and i'll give you an example that's something like fidgeting like i'm doing it now with my hands going for extra walks cleaning your house gardening so the bulk of the calories that you burn every day is your basal metabolic consumption. That's basically the calories you need to keep you alive. Your heartbeat, your breathing, just like normal things you do, okay? So the way you can increase that is sometimes I'll see a patient, I'll go, okay, so what's your normal routine? I go to work, I come home, I sit on the couch, I have dinner, I watch Netflix. That's not gonna cut it. You gotta do activity throughout your day. In fact, studies show that people that have activity throughout the day will lose way more weight than people that go to the gym for an hour or two, okay? Because you wanna have consistent movement throughout the day planned. So that it's increasing your basal metabolic rate. Basically, the amount of energy that you're using just throughout the day on average, okay? So how do you get that average up? Well, let's say you have a sedentary job like most of us do. You go to the office, you get a 15 minute break. Go for a walk. While you're doing that 15 minute walk, you can make your phone calls, you can eat your snack, drink a water, do whatever. Just walk, it has to be consistent. 
You get a half hour, an hour lunch. Take a walking lunch. When I work in places where I have to take a lunch, I pack something to eat that I can drink or I can eat like a sandwich or something and I go for a walk. I don't ever sit down and eat during lunchtime because that's gonna lower your basal metabolic rate. If you're already sitting for eight hours, why are you gonna sit during your lunch? That's not good for you. It's bad for your health. It's gonna make you gain a lot of weight. And then I get another 15 minute break. Like most people, you go for another walk. So there's one hour of exercise extra a day. On top of if you go to the gym, which is another hour. So you got your two 15 minute breaks, your 30 minute lunch or your one hour lunch. And then what you do is whenever you get to an escalator or there's an elevator, take the stairs. Just make it a habit of always taking the stairs. No matter where I'm at, I take the stairs. I fly home to the, from the airport, there's several escalators. I just take the stairs up and down. And it's funny, I'm walking down or up the stairs. And I'm watching the people on the escalator and we're moving at the same pace. So you're not gonna save any time taking the escalator because there's usually people in front of you. So you can't really go down them. So you have to figure out ways to intertwine activity throughout your day. Now, if you're gonna watch TV, maybe ride the bike, you know, when you, when you get home, instead of having someone do everything for you, like, you know, your wife, your husband, help them out. Help your wife or your husband cook dinner, chop, you know, just make it a habit to intertwine more activity throughout your day. That's gonna make you lose a lot more weight than calorie restriction or simply going to the gym. Now, there's a fourth way to lose exercise, and this is my favorite. Okay, as some of you know, I come from a very large family. When I say large, I mean weight-wise. <laughs> a lot of big people in my family. Okay, a lot of my friends and everything else. So I love my family, my friends. That's why I wrote my book, Over 250 Ways to Lose Weight Without Diet and Exercise. I was trying to figure out how to help people lose weight. I researched for like two years. I grabbed everything I could from research to write that book. But then I came up with this big book. It looked like a dictionary. No one's gonna read that. So I had to condense it down like this. And then I was thinking a few weeks ago and I thought, you know what? I need to make it easier, even easier. How can I walk into a room and talk to a patient for a minute or two and explain to them how they can lose weight? So I got the latest research, I read some really cool stuff, and I put it into like a paragraph, and I'm gonna share that with you. That's my fourth strategy, okay? So basically, what's happening is a lot of people are indoors, all of us, we're indoors all the time. We're not getting a lot, enough sun. You can see this beautiful sunlight on my skin here, okay? We're animals. We're just like, you know, the animals, the birds, lizards, everything else, the fish, the plants. We need sunlight to survive. And it's not just the vitamin D. A lot of people think, well, I'm just gonna take vitamin D supplements. No, research from the NIH, the National Institute of Health has shown that's a really small component. And actually they've found that most people get almost no benefit from taking vitamin D supplementation. It's not just the vitamin D, it's the other benefits you get from the sun. The sun triggers a lot of hormonal and chemical responses inside of your body, predominantly on your skin, but everywhere else. In fact, a lot of people that have visual problems like myopia, which is like nearsightedness, it can be corrected by going out in the sunlight and getting sunlight every day. They've actually found that it corrects people's vision. You can ditch the glasses if you're having issues with, with nearsightedness. So there's a lot of benefits and it can't be summed into simply vitamin D. And it makes me think of like oranges. When I talk to patients, they tell me, why drink orange juice every day? You know, obviously, Orange juice is not good for you. Juices are not good for you. It's a lot of sugar. They go, why not? I go, well, because when you eat an orange, you have all the fiber. And most of the nutrients, about 90% of it is in that fiber. You have all the bioflavonoids. All the things that give you the benefits of an orange are in the fiber. So when you juice it, yes, there's a lot of benefits. There's vitamin C, there's, but you're gonna get just sugar. When you eat the whole orange, you get the fiber and the fiber slows down the consumption, the absorption of the glucose, the sugar from the orange. So you don't have a big spike. You don't get the negative benefits of it. So you're always better to eat the fruit versus the juice. Same thing with sunlight. You're much better off getting sunlight versus just taking vitamin D. Okay, so let me wrap it up. Let me explain what the strategy is. First off, when you wake up in the morning, you've been fasting all night. You haven't eaten all night, okay? So you're in a glucose deficit. Glucose is the sugar in your body. You, your cells convert it to something called ATP, adenosine triphosphate. And that's what humans use for energy. That's how we move. That's how we live. So everything you eat, whether it's a 
a lettuce or a piece of bread or a piece of chicken. It gets converted eventually into glucose in your bloodstream, okay? When you wake up in the morning, it's gone. You've used up all of it because you've been living on it all night while you're sleeping. That's a good thing. You can use that to your advantage. What you want to do is remove whatever remaining glucose might be in your bloodstream. The way you do that is you got to do some fast, exercise for about 10 minutes. So wake up and go on some sprints, wind sprints. Get on a bicycle and just go as hard as you can the bicycle. Get your jump rope and jump rope quick, fast as you can. The idea is to go quick and fast. You're only gonna do about 10 minutes, that's it. So you wanna hit it as hard as you can, you're gonna break a sweat. You don't wanna go on a jog, you don't wanna go on an easy bike ride. No, it has to be hard. When you go hard, you're gonna use up all that glucose, it's gonna be gone. So you're gonna trigger lipolysis, which is breaking apart two cells, the glycerol and the fatty acids. Okay, that's what that's basically what fat is made out of in your body. The glycerol is gonna go to your liver, it's gonna get absorbed. The fatty acids are gonna get burned up as energy. That's when you hear people talking about ketosis or keto, keto diets and all that. That's what you're triggering is ketosis. But you don't have to go to those extremes and go to into all those diets and all that stuff, you can trigger ketosis on your own. And the way you're gonna do it is by doing this lipolysis. You're gonna wake up, you can drink water, you can drink tea, you can drink plain black coffee, nothing with calories, no sugar, no milk, none of that. You can drink all the liquids you want and you should, because those are thermogenic. Drinks, beverages are thermogenic, they make you burn more calories, okay? So you drink your liquids, you do your 10 minutes, and you go out in the sunlight. So you should do the 10 minutes of exercise outside, okay? Without sunglasses. I'm wearing sunglasses because the sun's right in my eyes and I can't see. But otherwise, I, I wouldn't be wearing my sunglasses. And if you can, take your shirt off. If you're in your backyard, go on some small shorts so the sun's hitting more of your body. Ideal sunlight is right now in the morning. The sun is just rising here. It's not hot. I'm not gonna get burned. I'm not gonna get skin cancer, none of that. A lot of people are telling me, well, I'm scared of you know, getting skin cancer. No, you need sunlight. We all need sunlight. We're not getting enough of it. In fact, they say that not getting at least 30 minutes a day of sunlight is like smoking a pack of cigarettes. It's very bad for your health. And they're actually saying that not getting sunlight, not moving is like smoking and drinking in terms of damage to your body. It's very bad for you, so we need to get sunlight. But you wanna get sunlight in the early morning, just like this. What's gonna happen is when I get that sunlight in my eyes and on my skin, when I'm walking around outside or doing my 10 minutes of exercise, it's gonna activate a bunch of hormonal responses. It's gonna wake me up. It's gonna be just like drinking a cup of coffee. I don't personally drink coffee, but this wakes me up in the morning when I go on the sunlight. It's gonna wake my body up. It's gonna help set my circadian rhythm, okay? Your circadian rhythm is basically your body's biological clock, and it works with conjunction with the sun and the moon, okay? So when the sun comes up, you want your body to have a reference point, something that tells it okay it's daytime it's time to wake up it's time to trigger all the hormones it's time to activate the body get the energy up go to work do workouts do whatever get everything going okay your metabolism speeding up so it helps you lose weight then at night what you're gonna do is when the sun starts going down again when it's dusk you're gonna go out for another 10 minute walk you can go out you can check out the sun your eyes are gonna pick up the fact that the moon's coming out sunlight's going down it's gonna activate another response to your body predominantly you're gonna start producing melatonin which helps you sleep at night so a lot of times patients come in they go doc i can't sleep i take gummies i take this i take that i take melatonin it doesn't work no it's not gonna work melatonin is very effective for helping people sleep but some people it doesn't work because they get absolutely no sunlight again like we talked about earlier with that orange or with with taking vitamin d supplements that's not enough you need sunlight you need to go out if you go out at night your body your your eyes are going to register your brain your neurological system your hormonal system is going to register hey sun's going down it's time to go to sleep and it starts another process of kind of winding you down which actually takes a few hours and you'll go to sleep you'll sleep better than you've ever slept before you're going to be healthier you're gonna lose weight. So let me sum that up for you. You're gonna wake up, you're gonna do 10 minutes of hard exercise, not weightlifting, aerobic exercise, 
sprinting, bicycle, jump roping, fast. Or you can do really fast laps in the water. If you have a pool, that's even better. That would make it even more awesome. Then you're just gonna drink water, tea, till about two o'clock. Why two o'clock? Because you wanna stay in that state of lipolysis, of fat burning, till about two o'clock. I know it sounds rough, but believe me, you're gonna get over it after two or three days. You don't wanna walk around all hungry. Get a big you know, bottle of, of tea or coffee or whatever, and just drink as much as you can. As long as your stomach is full, you're not gonna feel hungry. If you start feeling hungry, drink some more liquids. Just stay full of liquid. After about two or three days, you're gonna get used to it. You're not gonna feel hungry anymore. The reason you want two o'clock, again, you wanna stay in lipolysis, fat burning. And then if you start eating at two, let's just say, for example, you eat for eight hours. You eat till 10 o'clock, which I don't recommend. But even if you did, that's cool. You're gonna be able to have from 10 o'clock at night, for example, till two o'clock the next day of fasting. 16 hours you're automatically going to be doing an intermittent fasting which is going to help you burn even more calories and lose even more weight one of the main reasons you lose weight with intermittent fasting is because basically you don't have as many opportunities to eat when you're snacking all day that ages you it makes you gain weight okay old in the 80s they used to say oh yeah i eat multiple meals all days that's not true. There's a lot of research that shows that that's not the best way to eat. One main reason is because you're going to age faster. Think about every time you eat, you have to work to break that down. So you're making your body work. The resources are all going to go to your stomach, the blood, everything. It's going to be concentrated here. That's going to make you age more. If you don't eat for 16 hours a day, your body has 16 hours to do reparations on itself, to heal itself to get rid of cancer cells, to get rid of mutations in your DNA and everything else. It's a healing process. So you wanna shorten your eating window. It's gonna have a lot of other benefits. So there's just multiple benefits here of things you can do. So again, wake up, whatever time you wake up, 10 minutes of exercise. Drink only liquids, calorie-free liquids till two o'clock. And then number four, you go, you go out into the sunlight in the morning when the sun's coming up and in the dust when it's coming down, that's it. That's gonna stabilize your hormones. You're gonna eat less calories. You're gonna trigger lipolysis. You're gonna lose a lot of weight. This is basically the hardcore way of losing weight. I wrote this in my book, The Hardcore Program, and it's, I have to say, it's pretty much guaranteed. If you do that, you're gonna lose weight. I don't recommend it, but even if you ate donuts from two to two o'clock on, you're probably still gonna lose weight because you're gonna be in lipolysis. Obviously you wanna eat healthy. If you eat healthy, you're gonna lose even more weight. Weight loss is not that complicated. Most of the patients that I see that are obese, they're stuck in this mindset that there's something wrong with them. There's nothing wrong with them. It's more the habits. And oftentimes it's because people are not getting sunlight. That's number one. Number two, they're not increasing their NEAT, N-E-A-T. They're not out doing activities during the day. Their breaks, their lunch breaks. You know, you gotta move during the day. When you get off work, do some gardening, clean the house, cook dinner. Don't go to a restaurant. Don't say, hey, I'm tired. I'm gonna go pick up some takeout. No, cook because you're eating healthier and you're doing activity. It's healthier for you. You gotta make sure you're doing activity all throughout the day. Instead of sitting, sitting stand when you can. Get a standing desk. Again, instead of taking escalators and elevators, take the stairs. Little things like that are gonna help you lose a lot of weight, keep your weight down, okay? So thank you again for listening. And from Huntington Beach, California, this is Dr. Ernesto Martinez. Thank you and goodbye.